Well, folks, I made it back from the, the cruise in one piece. It was a lot of fun. It was nice to get away. But uh, today it's Mother's Day, and uh, all my fishing buddies, of course, are going to spend it with their their wives, their moms. My mom, unfortunately, is feeling under the weather right now, but she's getting better, so we're just going to give her a little bit of time. So I'm just going to go out and scout inside the bay and, and see what's going on. I haven't fished the bay in quite a bit, and, and I've had a, a few of you ask for me to fish the bay. So I'm going to go out and do some scouting, see what, what's going on out there, and talk about what's happening a little bit with uh, Piney Point also. There's some things going on there uh, that are kind of nefarious, and I think people need to know about it. So we're going to talk about that, but we're going to go out and scout and see what we can do. So I'm going to go try to look for bait on the flat, see if we can catch bait there, and go off and see if we can see if the fish are starting to show back up in their, their old haunts. All right, folks, so basically what I'm doing is I've come onto this flat, I saw bait, and I started chumming. And what's happening is this tide is coming from the skyway through this way. So what I'm doing is I'm throwing my, my chum up in front of the boat, and it's coming right back to where I need to throw the net, right here. So what I'm doing is if I started letting chum out here, all the, all the chum would go out that way, and it would go away from the boat. So you wanna make sure that you get an angle where you're able to get into bait. Now I have this comer on here. That's gonna cause a problem, maybe, by pushing some of this bait out because it just caught a pinfish. But basically what I'm doing is I'm throwing this, this, this chum ahead of the boat and letting it come right by where I'm gonna throw. And you, you would think, well, that doesn't make sense because the bait will start to, start to gather up there. Not necessarily because it's moving pretty good, so once it hits the water, it's already moving towards me. So once it gets to me, it's almost to the bottom, and it, it did. I threw the net once and it caught bait, not a ton, but I hadn't chummed a lot. So I'm gonna chum a lot now, but see how I spread it out? I don't put it in big clumps. I spread it out, but I try to get it out as far as I possibly can to let that bait come, or let that chum come through and it will get into the mid to lower water column, even though I'm sitting in, I think maybe three feet of water, maybe. Um, be, but that tide moves so fast on this flat that it that it takes that chum pretty quick. So you wanna gotta get it ahead of the boat and get that bait right here. So now that since that bird's come through, he's kinda push that bait away. And when I first get here, what I do is I take a small little handful like this, and then I'll spread it out and broadcast that I'm here and bring those those bait fish to me. Now, when I got to this flat, I saw the baits, the, the birds working, so that told me that there was definitely bait on this flat. You start, it's starting to stack up right, right behind the boat, so that's good. So I can probably throw the chum out a little bit more and get them, get them to come in. It makes it a little bit more difficult when you're doing it by yourself because you're having to load the net, get the net ready, and then chum at the same time because you don't want that chum to, to get light because if it does, those bait fish will swim away. But I can see them stacking up right here. Now I see the bait stacked up right there. Nice, easy throw. Open up the net. Just like that. You got bait. And basically that's how it's done. You want to let the tide work for you. Don't let the tide work against you because if I was chumming off the back of this boat, that chum would be so far back that I wouldn't be able to get them stacked up right at the edge of the boat here. So what you want to do is allow that tide to work for you. 
because these bait fish are going to always face into the current. I've had some people in the past talk about, well, why do you, why do you catch so much bait? Why do you do this? Why do you keep the, why do you dump it in the, you know, the bucket and this and that? First, I don't ever want to run out of bait when I'm fishing, and then we've gotten close before, so I never want to run out of bait. And two, a lot of people don't understand that a scaled sardine, white bait, pilchard, cricket, worm, whatever they call them in your area. They only live to be about a year old. That's why they have a spawn in the summertime. And these, these fish were spawned last summer. So they're coming to the end of their life cycle. And by June and July, we'll start seeing that little small fry bait. And the life cycle begins again. I never waste bait. The bait is either fed to the fish, or we chop it up and use it as cut bait or chum or something like that so it's never it's never gone to waste a lot of times we dump it right back into the water and it's still alive i can see it flashing pretty good back there now get a couple good chunks out there so i can load up the net so i get them far away and it's loading that bait up right here at the boat I can already see him flashing in the net, so that's a good thing. Well folks, um, bait was relatively pretty easy on the flats. You don't get them like you get them at the at the markers or at the bridge but it's nice to have a mix of pinfish and white bait so that's why I like going to the flats and, and getting a mixture of, of fish because a lot of times when you're fishing when you're catching bait deep a lot of times you won't get those pinfish so you as I always say on the show you always want to have as many different baits as you possibly can because you never know what these fish are going to be keyed in on so now I'm going to go and start looking I'm probably going to be uh, just on this side of the port and starting to look in the main shipping channel there, see if I see anything, see if I catch anything, and if things remain slow there. Now, I, I believe that they will simply because the tide's moving pretty decent right now, but as that tide starts to slack off, I think things will get a lot better. So let's go ahead and go out and see what we can find in the main shipping channel. All right, basically folks, you can see where I've got some current, or some current, some structure right here. So I went ahead and hit the button. I actually found some new stuff and you can see where it's showing fish on the bottom here. So I'm gonna set up, see what I can find here. Definitely, there's definitely fish here. So let's see what we can do. Well folks, I uh, dropped the first bait down. I didn't wanna start the cameras because I wanted to see if there was anything here. Dropped the first bait down and boom immediately got whacked so and i could tell that it was snapper so what i'm doing is i'm using about a one ounce stewie and what's happening is this this tide is moving pretty good so i'm pitching it out in front of the boat it's completely different than fishing offshore and then getting it to where it's in the structure and once it's in the structure i can bounce it along and once i get to a certain point then i'll uh then i'll reel it up and bring it in but it's it's sometimes very difficult to figure out when your bait's on the bottom so it's just a matter of of you know trial and error kind of it's understanding okay my bait's on the bottom and get coming tight to it because a lot of times you will start letting out line and you think oh i'm not on the bottom because your line's taken off but it's actually just the line going with the tide so you want to you want to have an understanding and that's why we use such light braid 10 pound test i even use as, as little as eight pound um, i'm not worried about the braid breaking it's it's the it's the fluorocarbon leader but we use light leader also so i'm going to see if i can't get a snapper up here but i'm definitely in structure i can feel it bouncing on the structure right now pulling it up and feel it bounce it back a little bit let out a little bit more line come tight with it 
it's almost like a finesse game. You want to finesse it back. You want to work it back because eventually you're going to find find those fish. Now I worked it back a little bit and then I got hit. Um, so what I might do is I might try some cut bait since this tide's moving pretty good. Typically what happens is those fish like to hug the bottom when this tide's ripping like this and it makes it a lot more difficult to, to catch fish because they're, they're concentrating on staying on the bottom. They're not really looking for food. But I guarantee as this tide starts to slack off, these fish will get more aggressive. Just like that. Oh! I forgot I had 15 times this one. <laughs> oh! Got me. Yeah, I forgot I had 15 pound test line on. So that is, you want to make sure that you have enough weight to get to the bottom, but you don't want it to sit in one spot. You kind of want to bounce it back because sometimes they're staged up in different areas. So that was a key demonstration of what was going on. I was working it back until I got out of the structure, but I was still in the structure and that fish grabbed it. That was definitely a grouper. Good sight, good sign though. Great sign actually, because this area was dead no fish no nothing no bait no nothing for the longest time that's the first fish that i've hooked in this area in probably well over a year and a half There's, look, we're after right there folks the snapper i could tell by the way they were eating the live bait that they were just kind of killing it and getting off the hook so I switched to cut bait and that's what it took oh, I had him right at the top. that's what we're talking about not a huge one but hey that's our target species so basically what I did is I took our bucket bait cutter and I cut pieces about that big and I'm just hooking them right in the top right where the dorsal fin is and back through make sure no scales are on it and sending it down just like that on a one ounce stewie jig as soon as it gets to the bottom we're whacking it you just gotta let them take it though because they'll sit there and they'll go pop, 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 and they'll tap it tap it tap it but when one takes it that's when you want to get the hook in them this tide is starting to slow down a little bit so i'll probably start dropping in weight in the next 10 minutes or so as soon as that tide starts to slow down I like to drop weight uh, just to give it as much of a natural presentation as I possibly can they're tapping it now boom boom come on take it boom boom take it So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook it right in the back of the tail, clear out some of the scales, and then hook them right in the tail, get that scale off the barb. That's exactly what it's going to look like. Sometimes it, it, it's a little harder to get them down like this, so what I'll do is I'll pitch them up front a little bit and then let him work that way down because they'll swim up in the water column. He was he was up now now he's going down but it takes a little bit for him to get down but that's this a lot of times will create a reactionary bite to where if they're if those snapper aren't wanting to eat it in a certain hook uh if it's hooked in a certain way a lot of times those fish won't eat it but if you turn it around sometimes that will create a reactionary bite and that's what you want to do so as you can see folks there's some fish right on right on this ledge right here there's really some really nice rocky bottom in here so i'm going to give this a try i've caught some fish lost some fish waiting for that tide to slow down just a little bit more and see what we can do but this is a great area as you can see we're, it's a real nice rock pile here real nice show of fish just off the back side of this rock pile so i guarantee these fish are starting to come up a little bit more and i think that will help when that tide starts to slow down a little bit and uh see what we can see what can we can get going but 
it it's definitely very promising because of what I'm seeing and what I'm catching and so I'm really really happy about that but I know for a fact that Piney Point is still dumping water even though they're gonna deny it we know for a fact that they're dumping water still and the grass flats on Piney Point out near Bishop's Harbor are all but gone so they're definitely still dumping it's not a good situation I'm gonna look into it a little bit farther but I just want everybody to know that they are still dumping until they get that 3,000 plus foot well drilled they're gonna to continue to dump into Tampa Bay I need it like a freight train Cut bait went down to a half ounce. Not the biggest one in the world, but hey, it's a good sign. A very good sign in the area that I wasn't catching any fish in. I haven't fished here in a while, but the last couple times I came here, I dropped the camera, didn't see anything. Um, so I was kind of skeptical if this, if there was going to be fish here or not, and there definitely is fish here. There's definitely snapper and grouper. So let's see what else we can do. Like I said, this tide is starting to slow down a little bit. So I drop down and wait. As the tide slows down, I drop down and wait. And it will get to a point where I'll probably get to a slacker. Eighth ounce and see what we can do. Well, that's something I haven't caught in a long time inside the bay is a red grouper. I didn't get it on camera, but it's good to see that they're coming back into the bay. So basically when it's getting right to the bottom, they're on it. That tide has slowed down quite a bit. So these fish are coming up off the bottom and getting more and more active. That one literally hit it as soon as it got to the bottom. Put that one right there. There's a snapper. It's amazing what will do, what will happen. Oh, it's a small group. When that tide starts to slack off, these fish get more and more active inside the bay. Outside the bay, you want that tide moving. Again, another good side. <laughs> as big as my bait. Just like that, I went to the eighth ounce and bam! They were hitting it. Oh, come on, man. Just like that, folks. Oh. Just like that, you get broken off. I may need to go to my Fletcher Custom Rod. All right, so basically folks, as I explained to you before, when I'm fishing like this in the bay, I like to lay the line on the water until I get to about 10 feet off the bottom. And then I start feeding it by hand so I can feel it. As you just saw, I lost a really nice fish. Now, if I had chum, I could probably get these fish to come up off the bottom, but I don't have any chum with me because this was just a kind of a quick trip type of thing. So I'm at four now. So I'm going to start feeding it by hand, unless they hit it beforehand. Sometimes they do. But if I get if I get my butt handed to me again, then I know I'm going to have to go up in size.
cut the tail off and got the snapper. Well folks, that was a fun day on the bay. It was nice to get out and finally fish inside the bay. I was a little worried if some of the areas that I fished in the past didn't weren't holding fish. We're not going to be holding fish this time, but I've got to say I was pleasantly surprised that there are fish back in those areas in the main shipping channel. So I think the bay is doing really, really good and I think it's only going to get better just as long as we don't have any nasty water or anything else like that. But unfortunately, like I said earlier in this episode, we know for a fact that they are dumping at Piney Point. Um, they're not going to publicly say it. They're not going to come out and say, yes, we're pumping. They're going to deny it, deny it, deny it. But they are definitely pumping out. Uh, I don't know to what extent, but they are definitely pumping out um, the bad water until they get that well fixed because they weren't able to fix that hole that was in there before but anyway without with that being off to the side um, the water clarity was actually really really good um, I was able to sink my bait down probably 15 20 feet so the water quality was pretty good uh, like I said the fish are starting to show up in those areas that they weren't there before so that's really good to see I lost a couple of really nice fish uh, which one was my fault completely because I was using 15 pound test uh, f fluorocarbon so uh, it, that, that kind of messed me up but anyway it was a great day to be on the water I hope you guys learned something about catching bait on the flats when you have a flat that has a lot of current to it I hope you learned uh, something about what I'm looking for when I go out there I'm going to start doing more of these uh, during especially during the week and so we can uh, kind of cover the bay and offshore at the same time so if there's something that you guys want to see please let me know again i want to say thank you to everybody for watching we really appreciate it we appreciate all the support fish more catch more and we'll see you on the flip side